Well, hello, friends. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Take 5. We're dealing with the message that I preached for the past two Sundays that we titled A Reason to Hope. And we are trying to get some understanding about this hope that we as believers have that the world does not. Those that, that are without Jesus Christ, those that are outside salvation by, by faith, those that the Holy Spirit does not dwell in, they do not have that hope that we have today. And this is what we're trying to understand. First Peter chapter 3, 12 through 15. And we've been reading this uh, a good bit for the past two weeks. And I really hope it's starting to make an impression on your heart and on your mind. This is what it says. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. That means he's watching us. His ears are open to our prayers. He's listening. The face of the Lord is against those that do evil. And who is he that will harm you? if you become followers of what is good, so he is against our enemies. Even if you suffer, even if you endure hardship, even if you go through troublesome times and disparaging times, if you do this for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. That's what we're supposed to be ready to do. We're supposed to be ready to give an answer to anyone that asks about this hope that we have that they do not have. But, but before they can ask, we've got to live it so they can see it, so they'll have a reason to ask us about it. Now, we, when we talk about biblical hope, uh, it, it's not that passive mindset that somebody uh, that, that some of us have that we use from time to time. We use the word hope very passively, but biblically, it's a very powerful word. It's full of faith. It's full of expectation. It's full of anticipation. As a matter of fact, if you take the definitions for hope from a biblical uh, viewpoint and you compact them together, it sounds something like this. It's an expectation, an anticipation that confidently knows that regardless of circumstance, times, politics, enemies, or finances, that all will be well for the believer in Jesus Christ. That's God's promise, and that is the hope that we have. Now, what we've been trying to do is trying to see what the Bible says about this hope that is based upon faith, because worldly hope is based on facts, and, and, and the Bible, it, it will not figure in to a fact-based hope, but it will figure in to a faith-based hope, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to see what the Bible says about this hope that is based on faith. We've learned a couple of things so far. Number one, the Word of God always gives us a reason to hope. Number two, sometimes you've got a hope without any basis for fulfillment at all. And we learned a very powerful lesson from the uh, life of Abraham there. Number three for today, the believer's hope knows that without God, things could always be worse. Now, you need to really grasp that because that's a fact. Without God, things could always be worse. Before we get so beside ourselves and get so up in the air and get so concerned about how bad things are, Hope says, you know what? Things could always be worse. And if it would not have been for God on our side where we've been so far, this thing might have killed us. And, and that's exactly what Jeremiah said. When you begin to talk about the prophecy of Jeremiah, he was writing to Israel and prophesying to them while they were in captivity to Babylon there. Nebuchadnezzar had besieged Jerusalem and taken the Israelites captive, and this was going to be a 70-year captivity. They're going to be enslaved for 70 years. During this time, Many of them are going to die because of persecution, but God is going to use this time of slavery as a chastisement for Israel's idolatry and their disobedience and rebellion. And God uses Jeremiah to prophesy to the Hebrews and remind them that they are his people and that he still has a plan for their future success. Everybody's familiar with that, Jeremiah 29 
uh, 11, God speaks about that and tells the people that he has good things in store for them in the future, regardless of where they are right now at the present. And in the midst of all of the chaos and the turmoil like he had never seen before in his life, Jeremiah had hope that God would raise up Israel once again because he knew that things absolutely could be worse if God was not on Israel's side. Lamentations chapter 3 is where Jeremiah writes about this, and he said, this I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. In other words, I have hope because I'm remembering something. I'm, I'm applying something into my mind and my heart every day. It is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. So Jeremiah is basically saying, you know, this is bad. I don't like being in captivity. I hate to see that the Israelites in captivity and some of them dying and many of them being persecuted and beaten and so on. I hate to see that. He said, but I know this much that if it was not for God, it would be so much worse. In other words, God has put limitations on what can happen. And in that reason, we have a, a reason to hope. In that one purpose, we have a reason to hope. This is not the first time we've seen God put limitations on, on problems and troubles and on, a, on an outright attack of the enemy. When you look at the life of Job, uh, the first time that Job was tried, God told the devil, you can touch everything that he's got, but don't touch him. He said, you can do this, but, but there are limitations. And then in the second time that Satan came against Job, God said, go ahead and touch him this time, but don't kill him. God put limitation. That's what Jeremiah was saying. He said, we're not consumed because the Lord's mercies do not fail. They are renewed every day and he is faithful to renew them. Therefore, we have hope because if God wasn't on our side, things could always be so much worse. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Friday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.